Welcome back or welcome if you're new to the channel to my little film and TV channel. Yes, if you, if you are new, where have you been? But I'm glad to see you now, right? We're going to have a look at a series today. I'm going to look at series one and two because somewhere along the line, I don't understand how I did this, but I missed series one of this. So, uh, yeah, series two is available uh, towards the end of December. So I thought, well, I better watch them both. So I did over the space of about four or five days. It was, uh, yeah, a long watch. Uh, Quite a few episodes to get through. So join me today, please, if you're new or back back for more uh, to watch Alice in Borderland or listen to what I thought of Alice in Borderland and what other people are saying as well. So it'd be great to have you on board. So please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. And of course, if you are pushing buttons, or you're not pushing buttons, I'm trying to get between 10 and 15 likes. It's not a high target, so if you can press that little thumbs up button as well, uh, just try and help me achieve that little target. You can be very, very grateful. And yes, Alice in Borderland. We do film reviews, don't forget, as well. Not just these TV drama reviews, if you're new. We do information vlogs. We also do the odd quiz and special occasions. But uh, yes, there won't be a quiz on Alice in Borderland, although it does, ask, does leave a few questions to be answered, in all fairness. So we could probably do a little quirky quiz on it at some stage. But uh, not today. We're just going to have a look at it. Of course, it's on Netflix. So we've had 16 episodes spread over two series. They do vary in length. Of course, certain episodes are a little bit longer, as you tend to find. So I think the minimum is about 51, 52 minutes. And, of course, it's a science fiction thriller drama streaming television series based on the manga, on manga by Harold Azo. And the series was directed by Shinsuke Sato. I won't give you the actor's names because it's just embarrassed myself by the name. But obviously, all totally new actors to me. I may, I may have seen him in other things, but uh, certainly no one that familiar to me. And it's about characters who are trapped in an abandoned Tokyo. I like that element of it. Element of it. I think there's season one. I think I enjoyed, I enjoyed it more when they didn't start doing the games and stuff. I mean, I enjoyed it more when they were trying to find out what the hell was happening. I like that uh, mystery element of it and I didn't don't get me wrong I did enjoy the games element as well but I like these things where you think oh I wonder what's happened and why and this sort of thing so I do like I like the start of these sort of things so it's bound to sort of uh, drag me in or get me interested that's why I was a bit upset I'd missed series one I don't know why why I've missed series one I've, I mean I have net, I've had Netflix for years so hey, there it is uh, so the characters are trapped in an abandoned Tokyo Forced them forced to compete in dangerous games, the type and difficulty represented by playing cards, to extend visas that, if expired, result in the player's execution by lasers being shot from the sky. Yes, uh, not much messing about with this one. The first season premiered on the December the tenth, twenty twenty, and it was a couple of years. Yeah, the second season was released on December the twenty second, twenty twenty two. So, I'm recording this on the seventh of January, twenty twenty three. So, well, about about a couple of weeks ago. Scores, scores on the doors, Internet Movie Database, Joe Public, yeah, over the two series, it's an average score for the both series is 7.7 .7 out of 10, which is fair enough. The Rotten Tomatoes audience, they were a 91% positivity. Rotten Tomatoes critics, 83% positivity, so still good. And we've got some names here to have a look at what their impressions are. Steve Green, he's from IndieWire, he said, Like a dream, you try to remember the next morning. It doesn't always make sense science fiction fantasy when you're deep in it though there's nothing else that's quite like it that's true johnny loftus he's from the decider website he said alice in borderland this he's reviewing both season one and two it's bloody violent and some or bloody violent yeah i'll say that it's bloody violent and sometimes stingy with narrative facts it is but it revels in making or breaking the rules it's created for its topsy-turvy world and the core characters are compelling and fully rendered yeah, there's a little bit more, I wouldn't mind a little bit more of the Wonderland links, uh, obviously the playing cards and the Queen of Hearts, etc. But I wouldn't mind a little bit a uh, bit more linkage with the games, perhaps. Uh, perhaps I'm thinking a bit too laterally there, but uh, I wouldn't mind that aspect of it. I think it would have added to it. And Collider's Eric Masoto, he had a look at season two and said, with higher stakes and much more intriguing games and characters, season two of Alice in Borderland is a thrilling ride that's never boring. No, well, 
Oh, I it's never boring. It gets a bit, uh, a little bit wordy occasionally. But as I say, it, there's plenty going on. Uh, repetitive, not too bad. Not too bad on that side of it. Right, my score, guys, because that's it now on on the critics. I'm going to give both. Uh, yeah, I'm going to average out for both. I, I personally. Uh, as I say, I haven't seen Series 1. So overall, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I watched the dub version. I don't know if you, if you watched the original with uh, subtitles. I don't think it makes a lot of difference for these action films, to be fair. So I'm, not, I'm not really that worried about it. It's just, just for convenience I watched the dub version. So I thought Series 1, as I said, started very, very well. I think it sort of lost its way just a little bit before the end and then we had a, a reasonable finish as you'd expect uh, setting things up for a season two which a lot of these series do i mean i've lost count of how many series that have almost bored me to death in you know two-thirds of the way through and then they sort of give you a cracking cliffhanger at the end that you know you're going to want to watch the next one even though you weren't overly impressed but i'm not saying this about this i thought it was uh, intriguing and interesting all, all throughout series one and uh, season two for me, yeah, very, as that critic said there, I just thought it was a bit more interesting season two in challenges, the games played a bit more graphic as well in, in the, you know, being sh shot through the head is not graphic enough and uh, you do get a couple of more uh, sort of ways of uh, well, graphic killing and that's what that's what it is and the characterization new characters some come and go very quickly as, as you'd expect but they're still interesting uh, there's still you know there's one or two sort of characters who might only appear for an episode but they, you do become investable that's what i like to do in, in characters i like to invest anyway so even the ones that are just passing through sometimes as opposed to the main guys who are okay uh some of the one or two of the 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 ones who don't hang around too long are quite interesting as well. I like that about it. You don't get, you do get backstory, but don't, you don't get a wash with it. It doesn't flood you with backstory. I want to mind a little bit more on certain characters. You don't get to see that. As I say, it is good. I just, I just think it could have been a little bit better, as I said. Um, and please don't don't expect a fulfilling explanation as to what has gone on to cause this. Um, it's fantasy, so you won't necessarily get one. But, there you go, I won't be unhappy if we find out, oh, alright, it's not a spoiler alert, but I won't be unhappy if we find out where the Joker leads us, so or hopefully it's to a, a season three. Overall, yeah, compared to something that's been there, done it before, I mean, you're talking, this, this show started with something like The Cell sort of film, and that sort of thing, and lots of these escape room things, and then it progressed a little bit, and of course, it's it's working on the back of Squid Games, isn't it, which is one of my favourite of recent years, and alright, not as good as Squid Games, because it's, it never got there first, if this had been out, say, five, six years ago, this this might have been there far, you know, the, uh, the sort of barometer or the, the measure for other things but uh, not as good as Squid Games but certainly a nice distraction and a nice addition to the genre so uh, yes I enjoyed both series and hopefully there will be a series 3 as well anyway let me know what you think guys if you enjoyed it uh, great to hear from you uh, I say it's uh, I caught up now my apologies that I missed out on C series 1 I should have been doing a review of that uh, back in then again it might have been before I was doing it I mean, it was around about the time I started doing this so I might have just missed it but I should have, should have certainly watched it <laughs> that's, that's the thing not necessarily I mean I've been watching stuff like this for years it's like I say, I've only been doing reviews in this vlog for a, for a two, two and a half three years or something like that but uh, no, no excuse I slap, slap this for burning I should, I, should, I should be more alert should not that but hey Thanks for watching guys, please let me know what you thought, It'd be great to hear from you. Until we meet again, that's one thing, not bad. please stay safe everyone, bye for now.